A new study finds that creatine helps support cognitive performance under sleep-deprived conditions. This is a really new clinical trial that we're going to dive into and explore a little bit more about. The title of the paper is Single Dose Creatine Improves Cognitive Performance and Induces Changes in Cerebral, that is brain-based, high-energy phosphates during sleep deprivation. So I'll just scan right here to the graphical abstract of the study that was published in Nature's Scientific Report. So this was a double-blind, randomized study design. Individuals uh, started the study at 6 p.m. in the night after getting a good eight hours of sleep, and they were deprived sleep until 7 a.m. the next day. And they were dosed with creatine at 0.3 grams per kilogram of body weight, which is much higher than you might use in a sports and conditioning or sports performance context. Most people are taking between two and a half and five grams a day. Some high-end athletes might, or really high-performing athletes, that is, might do five grams three times a day, get to 15 or 20 grams for a one-week loading period, which I don't think is totally necessary if you eat an omnivorous diet. But in this study, the investigators wanted to see if a placebo, which was cornstarch or a high dose creatine intervention would help improve cognitive performance aspects when individuals were deprived sleep. So the study subjects uh, went into the lab at 6 p.m. after a good night's sleep and they didn't sleep or they were released from the lab at 7 a.m. the next day. Now there were several over the course of that night, there were several uh, time points in which MRI studies and cognitive standardized cognitive performance exams were undertaken in the placebo group as well as the intervention group. There was nine healthy subjects in the study. Now, what I think is really interesting is verbal acuity, uh, verbal recall, uh, cognitive performance uh, scores, and much more, as well as MRI studies looking at brain energy metabolism were increased in the intervention group that is the high dose creatine group, but not in the placebo group. So let's look at figure one. This is the study design, as I mentioned, subjects were administered creatine at 8.30 p.m. In, and in one session and in the placebo group uh, in another, and they were spaced out. So this was a double blind crossover study. So every subject went through uh, both either the placebo or the creatine, and they were separated by five days. And what was unique is the changes in standardized cognitive performance scores, as well as changes in brain energy metabolism, which is what I think is interesting. So we're going to focus here on figure three. These are the time courses of selected metabolic parameters during sleep deprivation, looking at ATP, which as you know, is adenosine triphosphate, the main energy currency throughout your body and especially in the brain. And we saw ATP increases only in the creatine group. Now, again, this highlights the mechanism of action of creatine. Creatine is a, essentially a high energy phosphate donor. Many people think, well, you're going to lose your hair if you take creatine, which is counterproductive because creatine doesn't impact androgens. It doesn't impact dihydrotestosterone formation. It may help you have a better workout. And in so having a better workout, you increase DHT and testosterone, and that may exacerbate male pattern baldness in people who are genetically susceptible. But it doesn't increase you know, DHT in the hair follicle, right? Creatine helps donate high energy phosphate molecules so that in energetically demanding tissues like the placenta, like skeletal muscle, like the neurons in the brain, like the cardiac muscle in the heart, that the muscles, especially under energetically demanding conditions such as sleep deprivation or high intensity exercise, the working muscles, or in the context of the brain, the working brain has more high energy phosphate to rephosphorylate ADP into ATP, which is the primary energy currency molecule in the body. So that's what you're seeing here with these different studies, various analysis, looking at ratios of phosphorylated ADP to ATP and pH gradients in the brain and creatine levels in the brain. So it turns out that a super physiologic dose of creatine may help you cognitively perform better in context of sleep deprivation. Now, this study didn't look at exercise performance or strength, and we do know from other studies, and I can share with you um, this one right here, uh, titled, Does One Dose of Creatine Supplementation Fit All? I'll link that in the show notes, but here's a screenshot of this. I think this was really interesting. This overview, it's called a narrative review, 
talked about different dosages of creatine. Is creatine safe for kids? In my opinion, it is. My daughter is an elite athlete. She's running at junior nationals and so forth. Uh, in the middle distance category, she takes between two and a half and five grams of creatine a day. She's 11 years old. Uh, not worried about creatine for kids. I am worried about Gatorade and Oreos and Pop-Tarts, but not creatine. Uh, but the study talks about how vegans and vegetarians may get more benefit from creatine because their diet is largely omitting creatine because we know creatine is a carnonutrient derived from animal proteins, primarily seafood as well as red meat. Uh, and there is creatine obviously in poultry and chicken, but you're going to get more creatine uh, in red meat and also seafood. But uh, this study talks about how not all clinical studies show a benefit from loading creatine, how some people may benefit from just as low as two and a half grams up to five to, or 10 grams a day uh, around exercise. Uh, it turns out that work exercise skeletal muscle actually increases the absorption of creatine. As we've talked about before, electrolytes are needed to activate the creatine transport proteins. So you need sodium, potassium, magnesium to get creatine into your cells. And that's why in myoscience, we have the creatine and enhanced electrolyte sticks. I'll put links in the description below for that. But here's an overview of creatine if you want to dive into it. It's a recent narrative review. But going back to the cognitive benefits of creatine, I think this is really important as people get older to make sure that if they're not eating an omnivorous diet and you want to optimize the health of your brain, that you're either eating some red meat, some flesh, some seafood several times per week, or you're supplementing with creatine or both, because it turns out that creatine is important for uh, cognitive performance. And we need creatine for the high energy demanding neurons and microglia within the brain. So uh, this study really dove into the various cognitive scores. And you can see here, this is figure four, incredibly fascinating, the differences between the placebo group and the intervention group, again, at 0.35 grams per kilogram of body weight of creatine. I'm not suggesting that everyone runs out and takes that much creatine all the time. I, not that there's various side effects linked with this necessarily, but this is a very specific application and clinical study designed to give super physiologic amounts of creatine to see what effect that might have in, in the specific context of sleep deprivation. When we're talking about just optimizing language and number memorization and logical processes within the brain, logic would suggest that consuming a moderate dose, two and a half to five grams a day would be sufficient, especially if you're eating an omnivorous diet. But you can see here statistically significant differences and standardized markers and scores looking at logic, memory, language centers in the brain, as well as metabolites that are looking at brain energy pathways within the central nervous system. So in conclusion, in this randomized controlled double-blind crossover trial, we studied the responses of cerebral phosphocreatine, ATP, uh, free phosphate, total creatine levels, as well as glutamic acid levels and cognitive performance to partial sleep deprivation versus baseline and to a single high-dose creatine versus baseline and placebo during sleep deprivation. The sleep deprivation led to profound cognitive and metabolic responses. Acute creatine was bioavailable to the brain, suggested by increases in total creatine within the brain and reduce subjective fatigue compared to the placebo condition. Creatine alleviated changes in phosphates, pH levels, and the fading of cognitive performance invoked by sleep deprivation. Creatine induced increases in the phosphocreatine to the inorganic phosphate declines in ATP, as well as improvements in cognitive performance and processing speed exceeding wake baseline. Again, this is suggesting that a super physiologic dose of creatine, especially in the context of sleep deprivation, may improve energetic processing within the brain. And that is reflected by objective uh, proxies of cognitive performance, looking at uh, word recall, number recall, logic uh, processes, as well as focus and attention, which I think is incredibly fascinating. And last but not least, as we look at figure five, these again are the different scores, looking at again, objective language, processing logic, number recall, as well as what I think is important, speed of the brain. So in conclusion, it appears that good evidence suggests that creatine improves cognitive performance, especially in the context of sleep deprivation. So if you're a shift worker, if you have to do a road trip, if you're up all night because your baby is getting up to, to feed or go to the bathroom, you have a new puppy, you know, there's a lot of conditions that may compromise our sleep, you may benefit the next day by maybe taking higher amounts of creatine than you normally would. 
And what do you, what do I mean by normally would? Between two and a half and five grams a day. I think if you're exercising and you're pairing creatine with electrolytes around your exercise sessions, not many people need more than two and a half grams, especially if you're eating an omnivorous diet. If you're a vegan, a vegetarian, or you have been for a long time or don't like red meat or fish, then you might want to supplement with closer to five grams a day around exercise. But incredibly fascinating study. I will link all the research that we talked about, those two different studies in the show notes in the description below. And always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and be sure to check out the novel Creatine Enhanced Electrolyte Sticks by Myoscience. I will link that in the description below. As you've heard before, this contains two and a half grams of the Creapure Creatine Monohydrate, highly purified, derived from Germany. Most of the creatines on the market are imported from China. This is not. And this is paired or enhanced with sodium, real salt, taurine, magnesium and potassium. So it's a really unique combination formulation that helps support healthy hydration as well as sports performance. You can save using the code podcast in the link in the description below. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. We'll catch you on a future video down the road.